Students and teachers from the Dr. John Garang University for Science and Technology in Boa and the Padak Fisheries Training Center prepare for a practical that will give them first-hand experiences on fishing and living conditions in Tirakeka County in South Sudan. <laughs> From the administrative center of the Central Equatoria State Ministry for Animal Resources and Fisheries in Tirakeka, it is about 8.7 kilometers to the fishing camp Kumbo 2, where the participants of the expedition will spend five days together with the fishermen. After provisions are loaded, the journey begins. In a short distance from here, the Sud begins, one of the world's largest wetlands, which partly was designated in the Ramsar Convention as a wetland of international importance in 2006. Only a few minutes after the farewell, and with Tirakeka left behind, the group is surrounded by the fastness, beauty and the rich animal life of the White Nile. People living close to the river, fetching water here, bathing and washing their clothes, have built palisades as protective fences against the numerous crocodiles in this area. After driving about 3 kilometers northwards and downstream, they turn to the south for another 6 kilometers and now against the current until they reach the fishing camp Kumbo 2, where the advanced party had already erected the tents. This is called Mr. Stephen Lado, the fisheries inspector of Terakeka County, accompanies the group for the entire journey. He gives the first introduction in how the fishermen walk and trade their fish. Traders used to come here. We have some someone called Ari. When the time is near, all of them will rush and pick their fish, and then they come and wait for the trader. So Kumbu too have seven uh, small groups. We have four here. We have three down there. So privately, you, you go to the person. We have this fish here. We work on that. Then at the end, we take it to our kitchen. But, uh, the fishermen keep some of the big catfishes hooked and alive for prospective customers to get them fresh. After a first scientific dispute concerning the species of the fish, Bagros Bayat or Bagros Dogmak, the silver catfish or simutundu, all agree with Dr. Jock to the latter. With the weight of the fish setting a new world record, beating the old one by nearly 5 kg. Nevertheless, proper measurements are taken for later confirmation. Stephen explains that besides the external anatomical features like body shape, fin ray counts, diameter of the eye and others, even the number of gill rakers is equally important for the exact identification of fish species. Not only catching the fish but also filleting it is a skill that has to be learned and Dr. Jock, our specialist in fish processing, shows how it is done. 
After the filleting exercise and the determination of the ratio between fillet and rest of the body, the fish is ready for the pot. Surprisingly, the boys are very familiar with the cooking, although this is normally considered a woman task. Living as students and far from mother's kitchen, in many respects seems to contribute to their self-reliance. The Kumbo camp lies on the main branch of the river where the often more than 50 meter long commercial barges operate between the capital Yuba, Malakal in the north and even down to Khartoum in Sudan. The journey takes about 10 days from Malakal to Yuba and about half that time when traveling with the flow of the water from Yuba to Malakal. Students examine the freshness of this Nile patch. Here, cloudy eyes and the grayish color of the gills indicate that this fish is at least several hours dead. Today an exercise in net making and mending is on the program. Steve shows some important tricks on how to walk with the twine and how to ensure the stipulated mesh size. Sebit, a young boy from a nearby cattle camp, demonstrates that he is already an experienced net maker. Now it's time for a break and for testing the delicious soup made from the catfish fillets before the net making exercise continues under the watchful eyes of the young and the experienced. A stick put into the ground seems much better than using the big toe to hold the knitting twine. You finish with that? Yeah. So we turn it this way. Yes. At the end, the quality check shows the result of the first net knitting exercise is quite impressive. Stipulated mesh size and uniformity give no reason for complaint. It is evening at Kumbakam 2 and time for a coffee. While one of the fishermen is roasting the coffee beans, others are preparing the hooks for a long line which is mainly used to catch the big Nile patch. <laughs> Some added spices give the coffee the particular and favored taste. Mm. 
Some more spices and finally the coffee is ready. Firewood for smoke preserving the fish and for cooking is scarce at Kumbwa camp and the fishermen hunt for any piece of wood that is drifting by. The long line is ready and the students are proud of having participated in its making. <laughs> Often more than 100 hooks, if furnished with attractive baits, increase the probability to catch the big shell or kumot as the Nile perch is called in Dinka and in Mundari language respectively. The next morning we bid farewell to the friendly and so cooperative fishermen of Kumba Fishing Camp with a last photo shooting, wishing them always good luck and mighty catches. The next destination is the fishing village Yari Yor, at the shore of Lake Yor, in about 10 kilometers distance from Tirakeka. The children are the first to greet the visitors, the raised arms symbolizing the horns of a powerful bull. Later, some young girls dare to come, enjoying the photographs David has just taken of them. If there is enough firewood, apart from sun drying, smoking the fish is the main preservation method along the river White Nile. Stephen Rojas explains how the quality of the finished product depends much on the way the smoking is done and on the hygienic conditions. At the end, the one they did not wash, nobody wants to take it. Instead, they want to take it with no price. But when they wash it, because they are washing it, yeah, yeah. They're they're not, they are not washing it, they just yes, of course. Most fishermen in the remote camps at lakes or along the river lack the means of transport to sell fresh fish to big villages and towns. They preserve their catch and wait for bypassing travelers or vendors or they even catch fish only for self-sustenance of their families. If lake fishers own a motorcycle or a bicycle, they transport the fish to Terakeka, or middlemen carry the fish for a better price as far as to the capital Yuba. However, their catches are less than those of the fishers on the river. One of the highly respected elders is walking the tools for a trap to catch the Nile monitor lizard. Varanus niloticus, Agaani in Dinka language, can grow to 2 meters in length and to a maximum of 20 kilograms in weight. It is Africa's largest lizard and the most voracious predator. They like to raid crocodile nests eating the eggs and even smaller crocodiles. But they also eat birds and all other animals they are able to swallow in one piece. As Africa's most hunted four-legged animal, the lizard is considered a good food and medicine. Its molten fat believed to cure ear aches and protecting against lightning. The skin often is processed to leather. Some of us from the university would have liked to taste the cooked argani but today our time is limited. Before returning to Terakeka, an old man narrates the story of his difficult life, full of privations, and he wonders whether the new generation will see any change for the better. However, with the recent conflict, which started in December 2013, leading to a still continuing civil war between the rival factions of the society, the nearer future for the kids doesn't hold out much hope.